Empower celebrates Black History Month. Never stop showing up. Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievement by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history. Our nation can learn from the past and celebrate the many contributions African Americans have made to this country. Queens, welcome to Sister Power. Aloha. 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 Aloha, Barbara. Aloha. <laughs> I'm so busy listening again. <laughs> okay, so we have Barbara, who's in Atlanta, Georgia. Sequoia and Deborah are right here in Honolulu. So happy, so happy, so happy to have you here. You know, this is just such a wonderful time in our life. And we definitely want to pay homage to the late, great Cicely Tyson. I mean, there's so much to say about her. And there's the book, Just As I Am. Deborah, you had a chance, you, you have the book and the video, am I correct? Yes, I have the audio and the hardcover. And her long and extraordinary career, Cicely Tyson, has not only exceeded as an actor, she shaped the course of history. And she wrote this book, Just As I Am, and she entitled it after Mahalo Jackson's song that is entitled Just As I Am. Because she, she says, this is my truth. Say, so this is me. I love it. The book is a good read. You must get one or the audio if you don't have one already. I will. You know, I grew up with listening to Mahalia Jackson. My father was a minister, my mother a school teacher, and a later a principal. So we grew up with Just As I Am. That song was just so memorable. Uh, tell me, Sequoia, you know, your thoughts very quickly about Cicely Tyson, the late, great actress, iconic actress, Cicely Tyson. I recognize her talent as a, a young girl in the 70s and she was so powerful her presence uh and the way she would articulate and be so strong and uh she, for, me, for me it felt like she was trying to show that we are not a trope in the way that she would present herself and i mean she's most known i think in contemporary terms of root but we know her from she's been around for a very very long time i even remember her days when she was with Miles Davis. But um, I just remember she just projected this, exhibited this regalness about her and intellect and just pride that really made, compelled me to want to watch her. And I, I felt, I kind of felt that she was trying to tell us through her work to be who you are, be strong in who you are, regardless of what these oppressive systems are doing to us. You are beautiful, you are significant, you are important. Be who you are, be that strong black woman. I love it. Your thoughts, Barbara, on the late, great Cicely Tyson? I was just always so impressed with her because she was one of those people that you see and you want to put your shoulders back. <laughs> she uh, just represented um, the essence of being black and she was so good in the various roles that she played to portray what you know her heart was and I just I, I I mean I am I'm just so amazed that she was able to really live up to what she talked about being that she kept going right up until I'm thinking a couple of days before her death that is amazing at 94. That is amazing and then we have you know I am still feeling just that wonderful feeling about Madam Vice President Harris. And there's Cicely Tyson right there. How elegant. I mean, this lady is just exudes class. But moving on to that day on January the 20th, when our Madam Vice President Harris is now the first woman of color. So give me your thoughts on that, Deborah. Well, first, she's the first of many. Um, and first of all, before I go any further, I just want to say how delighted I am to be a part of your panel for Black History Month and to pay tribute to the contributions of our ancestors. And I'm very proud to have Kamala Harris as, as our VP 
and looking forward to the great things that I know she's going to, to do. Yeah, well, you and I were, we had uh, Wear Your Pearls on Inauguration Day out at Roy's, and we had so much fun, just fun, 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 fun. It was just- You give me this diamond necklace that I love. <laughs> So memorable, very, very memorable. And so Sequoia, your day, wear your pearls on inauguration day. Tell us about that very quickly. I was full of such pride and joy. I couldn't be at the event, but I had a prior appointment, but at that appointment, I was in my pearls. <laughs> and uh, it was a historic day. And it, as Deborah said, it was first, but not will not be our last. And uh, she has a lot ahead of her to do, a lot of work to do. And I know she's the one who can do it. And I know she will not allow, you know, particular demographics to try to shut her down, as happens when we Black women speak truth to power. And I think she's the, just the right person to put them right back, get them off of her, and put them right back in their place. Oh, I love that. And, you know, Barbara, Amanda Gorman, Oh my, we cannot forget her. And I love what she said. I'm learning that I am not lightning that strikes once. I am the hurricane that comes every single day, every single year she shows up. What's your thoughts about Amanda Borman? She just, I, I am just so, um, oh gosh, I can't even come up with the words. I just, I am so amazed and so appreciative of her. And I believe it is our time. And what she is old for her age in that, you know, what she already understands what she is up against. And she is just ready to um, go for it. And I'm just, I'm just so pleased because starting at that age, there's no limit as to where she could go. And of course, with us and many people supporting her, because the bad people will be there. They're always there, you know, trying to change your change your direction. But I believe that, you know, she is destined like uh, Michelle Obama and like Miss Harris. And I just I just think it's our time to shine because in spite of all of the insanity that was going on, we still managed to be in the front seat, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I love it. You know, sis, if you're just joining us, a viewer, Sister Parra celebrates Black History Month and never stop showing up. And this is what this is all about. And I appreciate you queens being here to celebrate Black History Month. And we're going to just talk about, Deborah, our goals. And we're going to talk about often the obstacles are so severe, we begin to second guess ourselves. So let's talk about that. Lead us into that conversation, Deborah. Well, first, um, Black History Month, which is what we're celebrating. It gives us an opportunity to acknowledge and recognize those people who have made a difference. It doesn't take much to make a difference. All you need are ears to hear and the voices of others, a heart that is willing to serve and a voice that's willing to speak up for what you believe in. An awareness of Black history is informative today to all people because it shares the contributions of many unsung heroes and sheroes who made their mark in America, but still remains unnoticed. So thank you for this panel that you have for Black History Month. Sequoia, you know, I'm going to jump around a bit because I love the fact that you um, shared some information about um, Kimberly Crenshaw, say her name, and, and that just is just um, very interesting, that take and say her name, especially from Breonna Taylor. Do our experiences as Black women overlap with other forms of oppression? Very much so. Uh, with Kimberly Crenshaw, she, uh, her work involves the, uh, around the concept of intersectionality. So we, as Black women, we have to deal with oppression on one level, it's like racism, but also as women. So you have sexism. And then if there's any other overlapping uh, 
uh, ways of identity, like maybe you're LGBTQ, you know, so you got black, gay, female. So those are three different things that you have to navigate through an oppressive system. So Kimberly Crenshaw cited these elements. And then even if you're in your own, within your own community, like say black women, you know, we had to deal with, up against black male patriarchy. You know, we're all trying to strive to be for equality and justice, but when you're in different environments, say you're all a white environment, you're looked at as a black woman, black female, or even black amongst white women. And they, the, in feminists in particular, white feminists, they don't want to see your blackness. You just have to be a woman, but they don't realize that there, it's very nuanced. There's many layers to navigating through American oppressive social systems. So she had cited that uh, we have to look at the issue on a whole intersectional le level, and that is a way to progress and find a way to fight this and to find um, solutions to move forward as a society. And she's very active with the Say, Say Her Name project, where we are calling out um, the oppression and the abuse um, of our, and exploitation of our Black females who aren't noted as often as others in this system and um, we need to get together on that and recognize our women that uh, we are a threat to this society. And I think a lot of it has to do with the rebrowning of the planet, of our nation, and that black women make beautiful brown melanin babies, black and brown babies, <laughs> and, they, and white supremacy cannot stand if they don't have the numbers. So we are a threat to them. So we have to be more united and vigilant in our cause and um, you know, live and strive and keep on showing up. Never stop showing up. You know, Barbara, Cicely Tyson, in one of her interviews, she was talking about this ladder. And she said at the top of the ladder is the white man. And then it's a white woman. And then there's a black man and the black woman is at the bottom and she's constantly climbing through this ladder. Let's reflect on the goals that you've set as some of the obstacles that you have encountered as being a Black woman in business, as being an entrepreneur. Well, as an entrepreneur, I decided I wanted to choose be in an industry where there were not many Black uh, people, period. So I decided to venture into the oil business. But one of my questions had been, with, with all of the different um, areas and the places where uh, you can really earn money, why aren't there more Black people there? And it's not because you cannot do it. And I think I set out to prove that you could do it. And I really did prove it. However, I did realize the fight to keep you from those particular industries. And even to this day, many of your, your top, uh, your, your investment banking, your oil, a lot of places where there is a lot of money, uh, you still do not have a lot of black people. And it's not because you cannot do it. Many times they will open the door because they figure, oh, well, they'll fail. And you know, then you don't have to appear racist, which is just not true. But you do encounter a lot of, uh, of, of what, of course, Michelle and Amanda were saying. You think all you have to do is to work hard and do a good job, but that is not it. Sometimes the harder you work and the better, the better job you do, you create more enemies because they just, the idea of you being there, for some reason, seems to them to think, well, if you can do it, it makes them less of a person. There's this saying, well, if a black person can do it, anybody can do it. And we know that from Obama, after he became president, you had all kinds of strange people thinking they could be president. And of course, somebody <laughs> actually did. <laughs> oh. Wow, this is so true. You know, well, uh, Deborah, who are you as a black woman? Well, after reading Cicely Tyson's book, and how she defined herself, I came to the realization that even though I was born in a small town in Alabama called Whistler, better known as Whiz Town, I cannot be defined by where I'm from because uh, I've been to so many places. And I came to the realization that the prettiest of my smiles has the most deepest secrets. The prettiest of my eyes 
have cried the most tears and the kindness of my heart have felt the most pain. So being all of what I am, being all that I have done and all that I will do, none of that will define me. My past hasn't defined me. It hasn't destroyed me, nor deterred me, nor defeated me. It has only strengthened me. I learned from my history, but I don't live in it. I'm a spiritual being as a black female with 64 degree of Native American blood, but that does not define me. I'm a widower, a mother and a grandmother, but that doesn't define me. I'm a godmother, mama D to many, a cousin, a sister, a friend, but none of that defines me. I'm a retired school teacher with many degrees, but none of that defines me. I'm a retired boxer, soccer coach, a minister, motivational speaker, Zeta Phi Beta, Eastern Star, life coach, singer, dancer, actress, uh, model, humanitarian, journalist, and philanthropist. None of that defines me. All that I am and all that I once were never defined me. So I define me by that song that says, uh, <clears throat> if anybody asks you who I am, who I am, who I am, if anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God. That is what defines me. If anybody should ask you who I am, tell them I am a child of God. I agree. And I'm a child of God. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I hope that I, I have not a single bit of talent left. And I can say, God, I used everything you gave me. I am just as I am. And that's All how right. I define me. I love that. I love that I'm a child of God. Absolutely. Sequoia. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Are there any program? I tell you, she took us to church and back. I'm loving it. Okay. I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm telling you. Uh, Sequoia, are there any programs, projects available to connect, empower, and encourage our women? Oh, yes. There are a plethora of them. Um, but what comes to mind and where I am right now is that, as we know historically, right, we have all these great strides in uh, our history as uh, Black women and Black history in general. So we know that with our progress comes great uh, backlash, right? One step forward, 50 years back, there's a pattern thing. So uh, I, where I am right now is all about uh, wellness, self-care, and uh, working within our own communities on a level, economic level, in terms of uh, boycotting, corporations that participate and are complicit in, um, in uh, you know, oppression and racism, um, buying black, buying locally. Uh, so there are uh, programs like buy, or companies like buyblack.com, um, officialblackwallstreet.com. Um, if you have a business, and those two particular ones that I mentioned, you can register your business with them. It's kind of like a yellow pages. Uh, for our businesses to kind of keep it internal, strengthen ourselves. Um, Colorofchange.org uh, are very, very good about uh, challenging uh, and contending with corporations that are complicit. So you might see them on the surface right now. They're all jumping on the Black Lives Matter thing and, oh, we're, we're going to, uh, uh, you know, divest from all these different programs or different legislators that we might have backed in the past. But at the same time, they still have dark money on the other hand. So I am uh, implore you to uh, look these people up. Um, uh, OfficialBlackWallStreet.com, we back, we buy black.com and colorofchange.org. Um, that was a, just a start. And of course, say her name for the uh, causes of black women. And um, yeah, all, and sourcewatch.org. SourceWatch will give you a listing of all the corporations that are part of this whole uh, umbrella, this uh, cabal, if you will, of legislators and corporations fusing together to uh, work against our causes. Yeah. Well, definitely, if you can email that, I would love to share that with um, Sister Power Network and Sisters in Power and Hawaii Network. We definitely need to, um, you know, buy Black and support each other. Barbara. 
what is your truth? I have to say that I am a person who honestly never gives up on something that I really want. I will just keep going and keep going. And even though I will feel discouraged, sometimes I found that being spiritually in tune, sometimes when I will say, you know what, God, I just don't know what else to do. And it's almost immediate that I'll get some answer, either I'll a phone call or something will occur to me. And that if I could pass anything, you know, on, I would say that uh, to anyone, because it's amazing. It, it, it's amazing how that happens when you are open to, to God and to listening. There's just, there's always, there's always a way, you know, and, and you, you, sometimes you do have to get to that point where it's like, I just don't know what else to do. And that seems to be when something else will come about and you just keep on going. It's just, you just can't stop. Never stop showing up. That's, <laughs> that is the theme of this show. And I, I love the quote from Shirley Chisholm. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. I love that. I, I love, love that. That, that yeah. is so I mean, true. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and I love the fact that uh, going back to Madam Vice President Harris, the color of her outfit, she was paying respect to Shirley Chisholm, the first African-American woman to run for president. So Deborah, what is your truth? Well, um, being that it's Black History Month, I, I, I want to share a little bit about where it came from, how it got started and where it's going. Because a lot of people don't know. The year was 1926 when Negro History Week was established by a historian named Carter G. Woodson. He was better known as the father of Black History Month. Now, Woodson, along with the prominent minister, Jesse Moreland, founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History and according to history, this organization was designed and dedicated to researching and celebrating the achievements of Black Americans and other of African descent. But a lot of people get confused because they, they think the month of February had, was chosen as Black History Month because it's the shortest month of the year, which is, it is the shortest month of the year, but that's not the reason it was chosen. So contrary to popular belief, the original Negro History Week in the United States fell on the second week in February. And this specific week was set to pay homage to Frederick Douglass because his birthday is February the 14th. And Abraham Lincoln's birthday was on February the 12th. Two men contributed to helping with the end of slavery, which was abolished on January 31st in um, 1865 in the United States. Wow. You know, that's so important to educate people. Really, we need, it, it should be Black History Year. Uh, as, as, many, yeah, right. yeah. as, also, as many inventions and inventors, I mean, people take for granted in stopping at the stoplight, a Black man invented the stoplight. They take for granted about the ironing board, a Black woman, I think Sarah Boone, um, invented the ironing board. I mean, we can go on and on and on. And Sequoia, you wanted to add something to that? And then Barbara? You all have already said everything. Else, but what defines me, I, I draw my strength. You know me, I'm a little bit of a rebel. So I'm Queen of Zynga, I'm taking it way back. <laughs> Queen of Zynga of Angola, honey. All right. And uh, just, you know, her, she was so strategic, a warrior queen and strategic and manipulate and maneuvering the Spaniards and all, um, and uh, just making her stand, you know, that you can't just walk all over us and disrespect, you know, her or her people by using her wits, right? And trying to get her people uh, united and to recognize the threat that was coming into the interior of our motherland. Um, so I want to, I draw from that, I draw from, you know, our Sojourner Truth, like Josh from Harriet Tubman, and, mm -hmm. you know, on and on and on, all up to Ms. Kamala Harris. So, you know, stand on the shoulders of great ancestors, and I cannot, I cannot express 
Well, I will try to express the gratitude I have for where we are today as a people. We can do better. We can be more united. And I think now is the time to come together as a people through our economic strength mm -hmm. to show this system that we're not going to take your stuff anymore. Mm -mm. So we're done. Well, I'll we're be done. Real quick, I have to say, I draw from so many. And every time I'm feeling lazy, I think about what our ancestors went through. It's oh, like... Yeah. You're out, you're not in the cotton field. You've got a car, what's your problem? You know, so I draw from all of that that they went through and still managed to survive. And uh, that helps me to really get going a lot of times. Oh, I love that. And you know, I, I love this picture. We can because they did. Yes. So there is no excuse Beautiful. at all. It's just absolutely no excuse for us. And, and ladies, queens, this has been powerful. It's been empowering. It's been motivating. You are inspiring the next generation. Thank you for spending time with Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you, ladies.